Hey, Tony Kitty at RTC. I want to do a uh, impressions slash opinions video on uh, something I've been able to play around with. I've been able to play around with for a few weeks now, which is DMR, Digital Mobile Radio, which is kind of a digital mode, uh, voice mode for VHF and UHF. Um, so it's a, it's a, you know, there's D Star, there's System Fusion, and there's DMR. Um, so I'm not going to go into the technical part of this much at all. Um, I'm no, by no means, an expert. On this by the way either but um, basically DMR is a commercial standard for digital voice um, there's a bunch of manufacturers making radios for it I've got two Motorola's here um, I don't know if you can see this is the XPR 4550 and the XPR 6550 the mobile and handheld um, and these are on the DMR the ham system DMR mark is the network I'm on um, so yeah it's a digital voice uh, system um, that was originally developed for the commercial world, has been adapted into the ham world fairly well, um, but it was never designed for the ham world. So that's a few things to bear in mind as you hear more about this. Um, so yeah, so my opinions on it. Uh, these are both Motorola radios, as you, as you can see. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on this. There's, like I said, many manufacturers out there. Some of these radios can go down to like 200 bucks. Um, the Motorola ones tend to be a little more expensive. Um, but yeah, so my thoughts. Uh, I'll kind of go down a list-ish, I don't know, kind of doing this in my head, but um, what I really like about it is it seems like a very, a very robust digital system in that um, the quality is good, um, it's fair, it's consistent, um, th that's the thing with digital over FM, where FM will kind of a constantly linearly degrading signal quality um, as you, you know, move farther away, get weaker, um, this will stay constant until um, it gets pretty weak, there's some air, for, some air correction technology in here, that makes it so um, it sounds pretty good. Um, the flip side of that is, is that there can be little delays sometimes because of that. Um, so especially when you're on the you know worldwide or North America, because um, it's all linked over the internet, there are there can be delays. So that's what's one of the negatives. But I haven't come to that as a big problem. The way I've been using this mostly has been local. So as you can see, I'm on this repeater local, um, and uh, yeah. So you have to program in all these channels. So you need the programming software on a computer. So I've got three in here right now, all in the same repeater, the local, North America, and the worldwide. Um, so you can have, and there's actually, each repeater actually can have basically two channels. The way it's worked up with the TDMA, it's like having two channels at once. So this has three um, talk groups, but they're not both, they're not all three are not live at the same time. Um, so like I said, I'm on local right now. I go over to North America. North America is on the same time slot as worldwide. So you, you kind of get to pick between them. Um, but again, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that. But anyway, so I've been using local a lot. Um, and it's worked well. I'm in the Chicago area. So local is like a fairly large area. I like to say it's the tri-state local. So I think it's little Indiana, Illinois, and uh, Wisconsin. I think it's part of them. I don't think it covers the entire thing. But it's neat because it's like having really good repeater coverage. Um, you can also set these radios up in some areas to roam where if your repeater drops below a certain strength, it'll go to the next repeater that, you know, meets a threshold seamlessly, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you always kind of have a signal if there's a repeater in range. Um, I haven't played with that yet, but I hear it works fairly well. Um, but yeah, this, so this has really good range in general because of kind of the structure, the network structure. Um, so I like that, the local, and the local's definitely the most popular. Um, I've talked to a bunch of people on local, a few people in North America, and I don't think anyone worldwide yet. Um, so those are kind of some things to bear in mind. But it is cool, the, the quality's good. It's really neat to be sitting here, you know, on my couch with a handheld, um, talking around the country, um, even though it's with the internet. It's kind of, I mean, you have to look at this in a different perspective, in my opinion. Um, I'm... A lot of people say this whole digital slash networked ham radio thing is not real ham radio, in quotes. Um, I disagree. Um, it's another technology. It's another thing to play with. I mean, you have to enjoy it for what it is. I, I think it's cool. Um, do I still use two meters in my car? Yes, I do. Um, will I continue to? Yes. I, for me personally, this doesn't fill the space of anything else. I like to experiment with a lot of different things. This is a cool technology to play with. Um, and yeah, it's just another option. I, I don't like, personally, I, in my opinion, I don't, I don't like this huge, this camp of just like, 
there's this pure ham radio and we have to meet it. I, I think ham radio is what you make it. You know, if you enjoy a certain part of it, go for it. I, I don't see any problem with it. So I personally like it. Um, also bearing in mind that you can do simplex with DMR. Um, I haven't yet. I don't think it's very common, but there is simplex frequencies for DMR. Um, you can also do a repeater on DMR without being linked to the internet. That's also possible. Um, but there's these major networks. I think I said on DMR Mark. Uh, there's other ones around the country. Um, that's kind of regional, depending on what the repeaters are set up as. You can only access the one on that repeater. Um, but yeah, so there's some, there's some different options. Um, in general, I like it. I, I think the audio quality is fairly good. I mean, it, it is digital. People, a lot of people complain it sounds robotic and that sort of thing. And and while I agree to an extent, um, yes, if you're right near a repeater, FM probably sounds better. But this just does. I think this just is good because it gives you a nice level playing field within a larger area. Um, FM tends to like decrease linearly in terms of like signal or I guess quality as you, you know, the signal strength weakens where this is fairly constant to a point. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it works really well. I think it's a really robust standard. It's designed well. Um, so I like it. The negatives other, I mean, there are some cons, I guess um, you can say like cost of entry can be a thing. Um, you get the Motorola gear especially, especially with the cost of the programming software and the cables and accessories and all that, um, can get quite expensive. And to be honest, programming it from the computer can be kind of a pain. Um, there's guides to do it and a lot of people will help you. No shortage of that. But it's still a little confusing, especially at first. Um, so you'll probably want someone to help you. I mean, I used the guide and I got through it. Um, but it'd be nice to have someone who's experienced to kind of pass along the knowledge, I think. Um, but yeah, the standard works really well, I think. Um, it's it's great to just pop on there and talk to some people locally and good signal strength. And, and it's another technology. Um, I haven't played with D-Star System Fusion really, so I can't comment on them um, and really compare them at this point. But I think this is this is cool. Uh, personally, I, I like DMR over those other two just because of the, uh, now there's a whole argument to the standards of this, how they're all kind of based around this chip that is somewhat proprietary, it's a huge thing. I don't want to get into that. But there's a lot of manufacturers making DMR radios. Um, there is not, you know, there's only one making D-Star and another making System Fusion. Um, I'm not crazy about the fact that there's like these multiple digital voice standards. Um, I, I, I would have rather if, you know, the ham world had, had been, able, been able to set up, settle on one and go with it. But it is what it is. Um, I, I think this one's cool because there's multiple manufacturers, but there's a trade-off there because this wasn't developed for the ham world. Some of the features aren't, you know, quite there. For instance, you might see if someone comes talks in, I'll probably put some video after this of just listening to some conversations just, just to get an audio check for you. But you'll see like a call sign pop up there, or you might just see numbers pop up there. And that's because you have to download a contact list when you program it. You can download it from the internet um, that shows that basically every radio has a radio ID to the network. Um, to see their call sign and name, you have to download the contact list. So if you are in a new area where you don't have the contact list or someone's joined since you downloaded it, you're just gonna see their number there, which is not a huge deal. It's kind of cool when you see their name and call sign, but you know, it's not something that's been designed, uh, the fact that there's call signs have not been programmed into the system. So, you know, w sorry, designed into the system. So. That's, you know, that's one place that shows it's not designed for the ham market. A few other things are you can do, um, these can have GPS tracking, but at least DMR Mark doesn't support it. Um, I don't know if other networks do. But part of the reason is, is because of the way it's set up, there's no way for the radio, unless you, you know, say it, say it something um, technically within the time span, it's going to beacon your position without giving your call sign, which is, you know, illegal. It's not meeting the, the, uh, the IDing portion. So there's people working on stuff with that, which would be cool to add, but that's just another thing. It's, it's not designed for the hand market. Your call sign is not attached to your signal. So you still have to, you know, legally ID by saying your call sign and all that. Um, yeah, other than, let's see, that cost radios-ish and the fact that they're commercial and that you have to program them. Those are the major downsides in my opinion. Um, I think it's a cool network. There's multiple networks. I think it's um, cool that the, that's an option. Um, I like the audio quality personally. Um, yeah, so, you know, 
I like to play with this because it's another radio technology. I, I don't, I'm not, you know, concerned about this quote unquote pure ham radio or future of pure ham radio. I, it's a radio technology that's, you know, it's cool in my opinion and it's, you know, it's in industry what's going on. So I like playing with it. Um, so with that, I mean, I would recommend uh, trying DMR. If you know somebody, try it. See if you can borrow the radio and and uh, play with it a bit. Um, I can't, you know, say it's the best digital mode. Um, I don't, you know, yeah, I mean, you can't really say that, but it, it works well. I think it's cool technology. I'm gonna continue to use it. Um, I, hopefully I can use D-Star and, and uh, System Fusion one day. Like I said, I don't own those radios. Love to try them out. Um, be great to get a comparison somehow, you know, a first-hand comparison, but we'll wait on that. But I just want to do a quick video on DMR and say it's a cool standard. I enjoy it. Um, not perfect for the ham world, but it's 100% usable, in my opinion. Um, and I continue to use it. So, with that, leave any questions in the comments. Again, I didn't want to get into the technical aspect of this because that's not my expertise. Um, you know, there's lots of stuff on the internet about it. Other videos showing the technical side, so, you know, I'd encourage you to look at that, but if you have any questions on my opinion of it, what I've done with it, if you're looking at getting it, have questions, let me know, um, and I'm going to try to get some footage here of just some, some people talking on there, just to see if I can get some audio and, and, uh, and the display of, of a conversation on DMR, so, that's about it, guys, I guess I'll leave a comment, and I'll talk to you later, 73. You know what, um, I just had a head into my car, and uh, I was picked up my cousin. I needed him to help me move something, and I was just dropping him back off at the house. So had the radio in the car. Figured I'd uh, I heard you, and uh, but other than that, it's been quite, pretty quiet. Yeah, I'm just getting ready to get out of Daily here. I'm showing the radio to Bob B9WLS. He's been around in radio a long, long time. And they're used to digital radios here. The security people use them at the school all the time. So I was demonstrating the radio to Bob. He said he didn't hear anybody on this channel while I was in class for three hours. Yeah, um, I really haven't heard anything, but uh, I was talking to GYC a little bit. And I got to check uh, one of the emails he sent. Um, I think there's another talk group that they're now that's now considered local. And it's not local talk group two, it's local 3166. So I have that programmed in. I don't really hear anything on that either. So um, they made a whole bunch of changes recently, so I think everybody's kind of been a little displaced. So I'm not sure, uh, uh, you know, I want to, once we get, once I get settled after this move, I'll probably uh, revamp the code plug and um, put something together that's more Chicago oriented more a little more so than Indiana, but I'll still keep Wisconsin, Indiana in there. It'll just be a little farther down the, the, the run, and I'll try to get it updated with uh, more of the, the current talk groups and then make some uh, future channels that we could assign talk groups down the road if they change and modify things where we won't have to reshuffle the deck on the code plug like we have to do today. So. I, I got some things in my mind. I'm just uh, just a matter of getting there. So eventually, I'll uh, I'll have something good together for us. So anyway, over to you. Sorry to be uh, rambling on. What repeat, are you going into right now? I'm actually going into Chicago, and I'm uh, about a block from the field as I'm driving. I'm sorry, you were a little broken on that one. Um, what'd you say, Dennis? Yeah. You can move this for me if I can tell you. When you're... 
officer. Are you being interested? You were in a great spot when you first called me, and then all of a sudden, uh, you kind of, uh, I don't know if you moved locations, but, uh, you then kind of were coming, kind of bringing the system up, and then, like, you were losing it a little bit. Um, I don't know, it could be me, too, because I'm in the car, uh, just driving around on the north side, and I'm around, uh, some taller buildings and stuff, so. Let me know if, uh, you hear me okay now. Okay. 